And uh, let's see, for this weekend, we won't have Dividus. Dividus. With us. Dividus. Dividus. What are we saying? Vir. Vir. Vir remissin Dividus. No, we're remissing Dick Dividos. We're remissing Dick Dividos. That's what we're saying. That's our German right. slogan. Yes. That's our German slogan for the week. And that's, uh, we miss you, Div, because he's not here this weekend. He's a busy man. But that's okay. It's gonna be us ladies. Sometimes, sometimes things get in the way. Yeah. And sometimes some of us make arrangements to be here on time. Oh, I'm just kidding. No, I'm sorry, Div. <sighs> Don't, uh, don't make it toxic. feel bad. I'm toxic. I'm sorry. Uh, so since this weekend, it's going to be a little bit different from our regular, very structured format, of course. <laughs> um, we're going to be talking about you know, ways to draw the eye, how we create a space to... Um, I do this a lot, especially. I like to have a focal point. I like when you immediately walk into a room, you see it, and it's like, bam. But it doesn't always have to be like a stage or something like that. I think people get kind of confused with ways to draw attention and make something like look uh, very artistic. Because it can be something right. very simple. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have to be so, so literal as putting an actual spotlight on it to make it, you know the center of attention, right? Yeah. But So, I mean, a, a very, like, we were just talking about this before we, like, officially started this, but um, when you go into, like, a living room, or, like, the very first room that you walk into, usually people will do that as a living room. Having a fireplace, you know, is a, a very nice, obvious focal point. You have, you know, bookshelves to either side or something, some sort of way that it, it draws your eye right into the fireplace. Usually people will put, like, they'll float a a picture, you know, over the mantle. Yeah. Put some things on the mantle. Was, uh, like an Ixion horn is often used. Um, a painting. And that all draws that attention to this, this central point in your room that's, like, the first thing you see. Yeah, so um, I actually really like how you did this bedroom because it's, it's very, very modern, very stark, but you have this, the color. The color, again, is another great focus point because it draws your eye. It's the dark, contrasting colors. And I remember this one. This was, you had a uh, commission and the person really liked their primal stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it was very important to him, male gamer, that he have all of his primal items, all of those trophy items, still in his house, even though he wanted a, something that was more my style. He wanted like a modern, realistic feel to his house, but he was like, I need my primal stuff. Can you fit those in? I was like, well, we'll try. I, we were, oh, blah, 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 excuse me. We were talking the other day about how just trophy rooms in general it's hard to do them in a way that blends with the rest of the house, you know? Yeah. But at least this way, it was the Shinryu wing, which is gorgeous. It's, you know, it's three-dimensional. That wing really pops out at you. Um, this way, it was a, a contrasting, like, because the wing is very, like, green and blue, and that dark purple really popped it out even more than it already does with its dimensional wing Enus. I don't even know. But yeah, I like this because if you just had a painting there, it still wouldn't, I think, draw a lot of interest with just, uh, you know, like a grade three painting in that spot. So having that wing there, even though I'm not really a fan of primal stuff, I think it works really well. Well, and so another thing that I, I wasn't consciously doing this, but it ended up working great is by adding the the black outline to it essentially and insetting the end tables to either side so you see how the the small imitation windows in their pattern there are actually further back than the wall that has the shinryu painting yeah all of that you know helps draw the attention to the painting itself and the bed which is like the secondary focal point uh, because those are further back and this pops forward again it, it all just makes it 
in your face, like, this is what we're focusing on right here. I want you to see that I killed Shinryu, took his wing, and mounted it above my bedside, or above my bed, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think this is a good example, because uh, we've talked about this, too, about depth and texture, and this obviously is like a 3D, it pops, because, like you said, the windows are recessed. So, yeah, that's a really, right. and it's simple. It's very simple. It looks nice and pretty. I like Don't it. Don't take a lot of items. But yeah, trophy rooms, man, trophy rooms are hard. Yes, it is very hard to make them look like they work with the rest of the house and they're not just like, oh, by the way, bam. Yeah, because here's all my primals. Because you're right. Often people put all their trophies, you know, in a line on either like a, uh, what are those called? Open partitions or on like a manor stand. Yeah. And then or, yeah. What, how do you emphasize, you know, something important to you? difficult right because then then it's just like it all blends together because they're well okay so here's my gripe with the statuettes i love the statuettes they're they're cool they're cool items i think that's a really neat aspect to an mmo just in general being able to gather or not gather but farm an item from a difficult boss getting this crafting item making it into a trophy and putting it in your player housing like that is not a new concept to MMOs, but definitely is a fulfilling concept to have, you know? Yeah. And so I definitely understand why people want them, but the way that they did them with the statuettes, it's it's that sameness that I hate. They all have that same blue base. They're all roughly about the same height. And so then when you put them in a line on those, like stands or whatever it just it all blends together to me and i'm like so i'm looking at it and i'm like okay well you have a trophy room i'm not even gonna I, I like my brain doesn't even comprehend what trophies you have because it just becomes a blob of blue and things that i'm like okay well you're very proud of this i'm very happy for you let's go look at the rest of the architecture <laughs> yeah, actually, i'm bad well no i understand and, and actually that's a, an interesting challenge you know, to try to make a, a trophy room that emphasizes space well and accomplishments. Right. I agree. And I, like, I liked using this Shinryu painting in this bedroom because, to me, it said, this is what I'm proudest of right here. You know, this one. lately, though, um, I, look, I would say mannequins are kind of taking over. Yes. They are, and I actually love this trend. Absolutely love it. It's way, like, not just throwing the mannequin out there and being like, look at my, look at my ultimate weapon. Like, actually trying to, like, mount them on things or put them in the showcases, the way people are using the fish tanks for showcases. That one picture with them mounted on the backs of the Seed Seer painting. I like that. Oh, my goodness. I'll find that. That? Yeah, that was such a cool, like, I know Div is going to be like, oh, the rest of the painting, but or the rest of the room, but, like, um, he's just got a thing for putting a Biako throne in an Ishgardian room. I think that's his big beef there. But the way that they did that mounted sword, like, just knowing, one, they had to glitch the mannequin up there, which is a pain in and of itself. Like, we all know that. It takes, you know, little Riviera shelf by Riviera shelf, it gets up there. But arranging it so that the Dark Knight weapon was the only thing showing and it just looked perfect like I want to do that in my next house I want to in well let me backtrack a little my next FC house maybe we can do that you know it's just a very cool a glass display where one could show the trophy yeah uh, I just put it on yeah. screen I really like how they it again it's a it's an emphasis and it's simple you don't have to do a a massive scaling wall. I mean, I immediately noticed the swords. Yes, and honestly, the way that this person did it with a contrasting white sword and a black sword, very, very, like, a lot of thought was put into choosing which swords were going to go up there. They're very pretty. Let's see. Uh... Uh, Nano Ronaniwa. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. <laughs> That's a lot of na 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 na. 
Um, let's see, they say it's talking about a trophy room. Can you imagine trying to build kind of a glass display where one could show the trophy? Like a handmade cupboard where the blue base is hidden. Yeah? I certainly can imagine that. Um, I, saw, I think that would look really cool. I saw something today, actually. Let me try to dig that up. Somebody did a shelf, just like BJ did, you know, with he does those um, inset shelves with lights. And mm -hmm. they put a mannequin there. Let me go dig that up. That would look really cool. Like, that sort of... If you did, like, a an opening in a wall where the glass was flush with the white partitions, you know what I mean? And, and hid the rest of the aquarium, and you had some sort of, like, backgrounds in the aquarium to hide the wood and all that. I can imagine that looking fantastic as a trophy case. And I know people have been doing it with the mannequins and whatnot, but even like, um, I'm going to call you Nanner. Um, even like Nanner said, if you were able to hide the blue bases of the statuettes, that would look amazing. Here we and go. you would, you would be able to, you would. Actually, this, oh. see, doesn't that look pretty? That, actually, that's more like a boutique, I think, but I love that. I love how yes. that looks. Yes. Just Nan is fine, okay. Just Nan, okay. You don't like Nanner? <laughs> Nanner okay, so this person is, they, they, well, obviously heavy BJ influence, but the level of patience it takes to do those um, leveled, the like the beveled trim around the windows, oh my goodness. Like so worth it for the visual level of like shadow and light that it gives you yes so much patience to line it all up and actually this person's house i had saved as an example for a really good just accent wall because it, um, again it doesn't have to be like rap said a spotlight and flowers and all this stuff like hey look at this you know like this person did their house really well with an interesting focus did we lose you Did you lose me? I don't know. You said interesting something. Oh, I said with just interesting focal points. Oh, yes. Okay. And also, I know we talk about this a lot, but that lighting. Thank you. The lighting in the inset shelving is key. Because otherwise, it's just dark and shadowy in there, and you don't really see. Okay. And also, I know I'm, like, totally going off everything here, but the tiny little step up with those lofts is yeah see how there's two levels there's that diagonal level and then there's the level just underneath it that's a yeah. that's a chef kiss right there Mwah. yes that is amazing love it uh, that, let, me show, let me show you the rest you know what that's going in my inspiration <laughs> let's just save that one right there that floor work. I know ceiling work is real big right now, but that floor work is, oh goodness. So they are- Whose house is this? Let's go there. They posted on housing snap today. I was like, oh my Look, God. They have all these flower things. Now, when you look at this, you notice the aquarium, you notice the fireplace, and that is a really good uh, measure of space. And it's interesting. Definitely. I really like how they did. The colors in the aquarium are awesome. The dark and then the light on the side. Well, look how they did their floors. Like you said, they have the carpeting and they have uh, the lines. I really like that. Yeah, that is fantastic. They did the windows using white rectangular partitions and they created a gap for the window. And then they also raised up a blade cupboard for a little bit of a cutesy trim. So what I'm loving about the different floor, do you see that area where it is trimmed in wood, but there's like the teal carpet? Yes, that's what I was looking at. Okay. Genius, right? Because that is, what are those? Are those imitation square windows? Something like that? Uh, uh, or beams, but I don't know. Oh yeah, no, you're right. They're beams. Cause they're- Well, they're how would they get down there? Well, that's what I was wondering. But the thing is, they're so smooth. They are. What could it yeah, be? Yeah, there's... Hmm... That's a fantastic question. Here, I'm gonna enhance. I'll have to Hold play on. with that. E enhance. 
pull out the, the super trooper level of cop and hence. I'm almost thinking the tops of the mounted bookshelf, but I can't really tell from the size. It's a little too skinny. I'm going to link the house and stuff. Okay. Anyway, I love it because looking at it, you're like, oh, well, it's probably like a loft and a carpet sitting on top of it. But that's the natural flooring right there. That's the unfinished wood flooring. So it can't be a carpet. It wouldn't float that low, you know? It's just very well done. So looking at it, it's too thick for a window. Oh, you know, I Nariko's right. It is the beam because you could get it up through the floor pretty easily just by stacking. So like put one beam at the very top of the hitbox on the beam on another beam and then put that beam on the yeah. partition and then put it up as far on the partition as you can. You might have to do that one or two times, but you would be able to get it up through the floor for sure. But yeah, now that I'm thinking, like, you wouldn't be able to do it vanilla, like, just setting it on a partition. It wouldn't go up through the floor. But if you stacked it a couple high, you would be able to get it up there. Um, I'm not sure about filter, because even without a filter, some things are shiny for me. Because I hear about this sometimes. Yeah. Let's talk about the wood shininess in this game and how Square Enix thinks we all wax our floors every single day. <laughs> It just depends on what graphics settings you have. If you have it on the highest graphics settings, they are super shiny. Yeah. Like, all the wood is very reflective. When I was on my crappy laptop for months, I was just I would just weep because I didn't have sun glares. I didn't have any light coming through the windows. It was just black. And, uh, yeah, no shine. It was a dark, dark time. <laughs> anyway, that house is wonderful do you i mean like just the level of commitment and i know it you know is again heavily inspired by bj but the level of commitment to add that white trim along the top there super good very pretty absolutely and so okay this is not a focal point this is not an accent wall but look at that tiny little like inset box for that just one little flower arrangement my heart. Uh, yeah. It's so cute. But yeah, this particular one has a couple focal points in this room that we can see. Um, the aquarium is a big pop of color. The fireplace over there is the secondary draws your eye. But it would be when you first come in, whatever that door is. Is that like a free company door? Probably. Yeah. I mean, that's what you would see from that angle. You wouldn't be around to see the aquarium on that side. But yeah, just something that draws your eye. It it um it makes up for what clearly is a very open floor plan. You know, lots of space on the white floor over there. Like there's clearly plenty of openness to it, but that's not what you're focusing on, right? Yeah, I agree. Um I think a lot of builds kind of overextend themselves trying to clutter obviously if, 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 yeah. if Div was here he'd be like where is my clutter where's my immersion but it's a nice clean house and it's not stark it's not it's it doesn't look empty to me because you have so much to look at exactly and it's not just black and white like most people think the clean modern look must always be black and white and there are lots of great black and white builds but this is neutral tones it's got some some of the celeste green i think that is and some some like beiges uh, it looks like a light blue on the wall am i right yeah a light ice blue very pretty mm -hmm. love it all all soft colors while still looking very modern and and now i have a i have another bar and thanks for the follow nanner and narika Oh, Nan, remember, not Nanner. <laughs> I'm sorry. Very cute. <laughs> well, we're kind of stuck on it. Oh, yes! There's an accent wall that I love as a pianist myself. That one, when I saw it, I was like, I need this. Yeah. I need this immediately. Like, that was just genius, and it's so simple. So simple. Just the open partitions and the white... Uh, well, I guess it's just called the white partition. And um, I used Hingen wardrobes across the bottom. So, but, like, 
Could you ask for a cheaper, more elegant, more stunning oh, accent? Yeah. All it is is just housing merch and stuff. Boom, bada, bing. Exactly, but it was just such a like I don't I don't remember seeing it before this particular build, and I was like, that is that is Galaxy Brain. Like, who came up with that? It's amazing. Uh, we can get you a link to the housing snap, which may have the address on it. Let's see. Oh, it was linked above. I see it. Uh, but yeah, so this is a good, this is a very clear example of a accent wall. It's, uh, it, it's artistic, it draws your eye, and it's, uh, I, I would say very stark, you know, compared to the rest of the place. I mean, uh, again, they have the black and white windows and black, uh, walls and everything, but it works really well. I love this. Absolutely. And another thing we like to, I don't, I don't want to say harp on, but certainly point out is the purpose. It is a music corner. There is a piano and a cello, and that is clearly music. Like that's, that's where you go for music. There's the wall that says piano here, right here. And I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, sorry, we blue we only saw it on that housing snap so if the address isn't listed on there then we don't know sorry yeah but yeah you're right about it because <laughs> uh, now that you pointed that out it'd be kind of weird if it was like a kitchen <laughs> exactly right like there, there has to be a purpose to it and so like it wouldn't it doesn't necessarily have to be in a music corner of a house like it could be uh over a stage i i actually used it in my um that commission for what was it why am I drawing a blank? Like the orchestra theater, like um, Symphony House? Sure. Sure. Opera House? Sure. Yeah, Opera House. That's what it was. That's what he wanted, an opera house. And it had like the orchestra pit. And But the, they, I used that as like a, I mean, genuine focal point. You walked in the front door and it was in the, the mansion, like that inset thing on the wall up the stairs, you know? Yeah. How mansions do up there. That's where it was, and it had a spotlight on it and everything. It was, bam, focal point. Well, pay um, attention to this. Speaking of that, uh, with larges, um, often people want to use that space, which is fine. Do what you want. You're large, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna get into that. But uh, you did a really pretty, what's it called, like a rainforest cafe thing? Do you still have that? Yeah, I do. Let me link that. But it was, um, that was just. We were still learning, you know, really what the extent of what was possible, I guess, with the loft glitch at that point. Like, I remember y'all were puzzling through it and figuring it out while I was uh, visiting family. Yeah. And I could not wait to get back and figure out, you know, what I could do with this. But uh, the reason I bring that up is because often that landing is very vexing. Like, what do you put there? Well, how how mm -hmm. can you make that look nice? And uh, yeah, let me let me I grab this. I see a lot of people resort to putting like a throne of some sort there, and I wonder if we consider the full implication of what that means. Like, is that where your guild leader sits and oversees all of the <laughs> goings on in the FC? Kind of, or kind like, of tyrannical. A, a little bit, yeah. Like, why, why is there a throne here? Have we really thought through what it is other than just something to fill the space? And, and so, again, that goes back to everything must have a purpose if shown, right? Like, um what is this doing here even clutter i say has to have a purpose if shown because you put your clutter in a place where it's relevant like you have your papers and your books and your pens and stuff on your desk because that's where you, you were working and using them right you, you don't just have those sitting next to the toilet that doesn't make any sense yeah so this was this is inside of a shiro large this is that space that people often want to try to use and fill in and uh, i think it looks gorgeous it was certainly a fun one. It was really interesting to try to play with. These were all like relatively new things at the time. The verdant partition, the use of the snowman butt, the diable leaf counter, and of course the loft glitch were all like 
well, how do how do we utilize these yes. to the fullest potential? Like, what are we doing? And so this bar was like my first play with um, trying to loft a, uh, an NPC. Like that was the big thing was, can we loft NPCs? Is everything actually loftable? And so getting that NPC up onto the troop stage was like a big deal for me. Um, Cause I was able to tell Shay, look, it, it stays put if you have a surface underneath it, see how it's standing on the loft. But if it, if it isn't above the loft, it'll fall. Yeah. So that was an exciting thing. And I got a lot of questions on this build of, you know, what is that furnishing item that makes that really ornate thing? And I'm like, well, that's just part of the Shiragane Large, sorry. And what are those lights? A lot of people were like, how did she get the fool's threshold on the ceiling? Thinking that those lights, uh, that like the square boxy thing was uh, uh, somehow glitched onto the ceiling, but no, th that's also just part of the Shiragane yeah. that no one ever looks up there, right? No. Because you don't, you don't really utilize that space that much, especially not that high up. You know, uh, looking at this, this is already a good concept just to use even on a floor. Now that you're able to um, have like an elevator floor, I think that's really pretty. Oh, well, thank you. It was, it was, it didn't stay very long because after I realized a lot of the implications of what was possible with the loft glitch, uh, I no longer wanted that space even visible anymore. Yeah, I know. Nowadays, you have to use like six rectangular partitions just to do one thing, so I'm sorry. They, uh, they have yeah. to go. Don't have the space for that. See, Nan, I actually love lavender beds. Lavender beds has some of the most beautiful natural architecture available um that i just is this the main area that faces the doors directly yes it is in the in the mansion it is it's just up the stairs but like the the doors that i love doing with the imitation square windows a lot of people question whether that's a mod and i'm like no no it's just the imitation square window on a lavender beds door because lavender beds is op and gorgeous yeah Ugh, lavender beds She's so bitter. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I offered, but she was like, no, I like the goblet. I Well, I'm stuck in goblet because that's what my friends like. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, I don't care. But actually, uh, my unpopular... My friend goes to school in a different ward. You wouldn't know her. <laughs> my unpopular opinion is I don't like Shiro at all. I was very happy to leave. See, Shiragane is very, like, you either love it or you hate it. Like, it's just, I don't feel like there's an in-between there, ever. Everyone I've talked to, they, they either are dying to get in, or they just don't, they wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Yeah, I don't like the architecture inside. I don't like, it's very claustrophobic, just being there, unless you have a really nice plot. Yes, okay, so it feels very, uh oh uh-oh, I'm on a level one trying to get to Mimi Krutix's house right now, and I just ran through the Noctis uh, fate, so excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it feels very suburban, right? <laughs> like, Yeah. It just, it just, there are houses all around, and it's very well laid out with paths and stone roads, and like, that's <laughs> just... I, I remember uh, uh, I remember my FC mate, she got a house there, and this was like right after the rush. So everyone hadn't really built anything just yet. So she had a really nice view of the beach, and we were like, you know, out there celebrating and stuff. And then at that moment, someone, I guess, constructed <laughs> their house, and it totally blocked oh, her. Oh, no! And then you couldn't even That's see anything. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Licks. Um... That's so unfortunate that you were celebrating that and then suddenly like, oh, let's erect some houses in the way. Yeah, oh my gosh. It was just, it was hilarious. Like story of every, I don't know, homeowner's life where like the city is expanding into their property. <laughs> yeah. There used to be all these houses out here. Back when I lived here, we could burn our trash as long as we wanted. <laughs> oh my god, That's a little too real for me. That's where I live. I was about to say, do you want to talk about it? <laughs> Ah, uh, <laughs> just all these ranch owners down in Texas, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> so, I enjoyed my Shiragane plot for my FC because it was the one like up on the hill so you could see over all of the other houses. Um, but I can't imagine being down like in the middle of it all. Like that just to me would feel 
Like, not the fantasy experience that I'm looking for. Oh, this is your kitchen that I love so much. Holy cow. So this kitchen caused so much grief. It, it took me a really long time. I always had this idea to do like an open, open hearth, like medieval kind of thing. And I didn't even have the manor stove there at first. I had, I was trying to do like, a, what, what is that called? Not, not the fire pit, but the really low pit. What is that one called? The Hingen uh, cooking? I don't know. The Hingen hearth? Something like that. And Something like that? I had that at first, and it was just clashing so much. It's obviously very Asian, and then here's my brick. And Gotcha. Uh, but that's what I wanted. Um, one of those just old-style Downton Abbey. Oh, like a, like a kettle hanging over the open hearth type yes, of thing? Yes, that's what I wanted. Gotcha. That's what I wanted, and I tried, and I tried, guys, and this is what I am stuck with. But, you know, honestly, I'm happy with it. <laughs> I have never seen anything else like it in-game. Now, here's a funny aspect that we talked about, what, a couple weeks ago when you first did your cooking area, I guess. I wouldn't even call it the, it was a full kitchen, but your cooking area in your Shiro Medium. You remember when you said you used the, and Div was like, what is that? serpent cot doing there oh yeah yeah and, and you were like well i just thought because it had like some pots and pans hanging on it it would be good for the cooking area well here it is fully tied in you know having that like real woodsy earthy look with the pots and pans hanging over the hearth and you've got like a little bit of ivy growing on it it looks perfect there yeah i'm never gonna let it go this is gonna be my thing <laughs> <laughs> Make pots and pans happen, Ashen. Just make them happen. Well, I did for a while. I hung up for a very long time the culinary, um, the back of the culinary, what's it called? The crafting station. Yes. Okay. That is an idea that I shamelessly stole from you. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So I really, yeah, I really liked that. I liked the idea. And uh, at that time, I was just using a window to loft it up, and then you have to go up a ladder to go grab it. But, uh, it was a Probably one of Ashen's top 10 ideas. Yes, I was very happy, very pleased with that. But a great one. Uh, it's very hard to incorporate because it is very big. Again, my kind of complaint, well, it's not a complaint, it's just me being weird. Just the furniture is so big, guys. And <laughs> the crafting but stations are I feel huge. like you should like that because you love the rose. Me. It's, it's all meant, it's all designed for the largest factor right not the not the it's not designed for lalafell yeah but yeah this is my kitchen uh when you first walk into the into my house you will see the kitchen and that is my focal point i do have a fireplace and the fireplace is one of those modern ones that bj did but it's very small unassuming i didn't want to draw too much attention to the fireplace because um at least for me the kitchen is where i'm usually at and it, in my own house, like in real life, I have a large open floor pan when you first walk in. So you can see from the front door to the back door and you can see the kitchen. And uh, so I like that kind of emphasis and I wanted just a very pretty country kitchen. Well, you definitely achieved it. And as someone who has been to Ashen's Goblet Mansion, I can tell you that when you walk in the door, it is absolutely the focal point. Like, the fireplace is a great piece, but it's understated enough to where this... I, I don't want to say a monstrosity, but it's a, it's a honking big range, you know. This big brick stove is really what draws your eye because there's all kinds of... Just lots of movement going on with the brick and the herbs and, you know, it's, it's gorgeous. It, that is what draws your eye. Yes, Nan, this will be saved. Yeah, thanks for coming, Nan. But uh, when I originally conceived this and I was working on my remodel, I had the kitchen and the living room completely separated with a really long hallway. And that just was not working for me because it seemed like I was breaking up the space too much. And that's when I started to kind of work on the philosophy of it's okay to have smaller rooms and space if I can make a large centerpiece which is what I did very very cute I love by the way 
not related to your centerpiece, but it's a texture on the ceiling. And so you just use wooden beams and lofts, but it is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it, it's close enough to the actual architecture of like a mist house that it looks very legit in this game. Like it looks, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw this word out there. It looks immersive. It looks like something that Square Enix did. It looks real for the game enough so that I think to a casual glance, someone might look at that and say, oh yeah, that's just the mist ceiling. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love it. I think you did a fantastic job with that. Well, thank you. Now let's discuss oh. let's discuss skies right now. Well, this was this was meant to be <laughs> an accent wall that uh, let's go for an abstract sunset, right? Because <laughs> we don't have enough dye options in this game for me to make a true ombre. Yeah. I think it's but, very cute, though. I really like it. I I like how it turned out. I think I would I would do some things differently um, when I remake it if I remake it. But I love like I there was this particular picture of a sky just fading from like this dark deep blue down and through the purples and the pinks into the yellows and whites, and it was just a gorgeous like sunset, you know, a real artsy like photography piece. And I was like, I want this as like I. I wanted to make an open window. Out well, of it, you know, right? here's what I was about to say. Here's what you should do. Here's what here's Ashton's advice. You, okay. you need to do that open window. You need to make it deeper, and use greenery to trick and kind of layer to make it more natural. The lines, um, like like you're looking into a deep, deeper sunset. Does that make sense? It does. It does. I think that would look really cool, and I challenge someone to do it for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because that would look amazing. I would love it. Um, but for this particular build that I was doing, it was just, it was more of a concept build than anything. It's not yeah. a permanent fixture in anyone's house, but I really wanted something very clean and modern. And my goal was just to play with the layering of the stage panels, like how BJ has introduced to us. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, his, his modern arts that actually look like a framed piece of art and they're like boxy with different colors. I wanted to see how that would look just as a, a full, I, I, my goal was ombre. I wanted to achieve ombre. I wanted to play with dyes. And so this, I think did an okay job. Um, unfortunately it was described as <laughs> what oh the the love child of the german flag and the pride flag uh <laughs> plastered onto a wall but well you know uh looking at this and um because i've been in kind of like a shop restaurant cafe kind of mode lately this looks like something you could have in a boutique like next to a makeup wall yeah. next to a makeup wall or like directly behind the checkout yes desk. yes you know where where you'd put the the big logo like Forever 21. That's just like right on there. <laughs> but yeah, this, um, this is very cute. Maybe dating myself here. Forever 21. Well, I read recently Charlotte Roos. Got, they're gone now. Oh, really? Yeah. Yikes. Okay, well, um, time to find myself a new go-to store at the mall. Hey, hey. Um, no, I'm like mom. Mom jeans all the way through. <laughs> so here's the... I don't know if I want to call her the OG uh, Starry Sky. Well, yeah, we're not going to get into that because apparently. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this is my observatory. Observatory. In my FC. Welcome to my observatory. Ah, ah, ah. And uh, this again, you round the corner and there it is. And I have my FC very dark for immersion. And I wanted to give the effect of looking out at a night sky. Very simple. All it is is just uh, stage panels and the carbuncle lights. And initially I wanted to do like a, like a sky deck, like an airship, but it just it wasn't, I didn't have enough slots by that time. I think I had like 50 by the time I hit the basement. 
So I just had to work with this. But um, I really like this because it draws your attention. It's probably the main room I catch most people in, even though it's like at the very bottom of the house, very far away. Technically, I should have had it at the top. <laughs> well, it is it is jaw dropping when you round the corner like because you come down the stairs and you go around the corner of like a couple walls and stuff and then you see this and you're like where am I like this does not look like I didn't know you could go outside in you know a Final Fantasy house and because it legitimately looks like a deck because of the way that she hid the uh, the wooden showcases partially in the wall like it looks like a railing of a deck the way it's rounded the way it just it is legitimately just awe-inspiring when you first come across it because it looks so realistic. Thank you for the follow, Lewin. Yeah. But yeah, I, I highly recommend if you have not visited this FC house, you should because that is the definition of focal point. You see nothing else in the room until you've gotten over how good this starry sky looks, right? Yeah, um, this is something I often try to do uh, with my builds is I, I like to create paths and I like to create rooms to guide you to like the big thing that I want you to focus on. So yeah, like what you said, you round the corner and there it is. And that is again, something that we talked about a couple times ago, just it, it's like building an instance. It's you are pathing the player who is, you know, the visitor or the SC mate or whatever, you are creating a path for them through this instance, which is your house. It's an instant zone, just like a dungeon. Um, and so you, you create this path for them to walk through to artificially see only what you want them to see. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah, it's just like you are in full control of what your viewer is going to see. So, so make an impact of it, make the most of it, you know? But yeah, I find myself, I've never done kind of like a fantasy driven thing before, before this, but uh, it's something I really like. It was definitely inspirational, um, even to me, because I my, my houses have always tried to lean towards reality just because that's what I'm used to doing in real life, you know, designing my own house, doing a lot of interior decorating, um, like with not so much architecture as, um, you know, getting stuff from Hobby Lobby and going going picking at antique markets and stuff. Like, that's, that's my jam. But um, it, it, your RP, like, little fantasy shop was so, like, it reminded me, I'm playing Final Fantasy for a reason. I can, I can make something that feels a little bit more, like, what I would want to read in a book about dragons and fairies and princesses <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like it can be that too. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like a house that I would live in and sleep in and cook meals in. That's what I do in real life. Like <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that that was the angle I was going for. It was just embrace the fantasy. But here's your very pretty Realism. <laughs> well speaking of realism, here's your very pretty shower. I really like your inset shelf there. So this inset shelf, when we were, I mean, the whole point this this segment was to talk about, you know, creating wall interest, right? And so this was a tiny, this was my one floor challenge, the one floor small. Um, and this bathroom was located in what I call like a little gable, a gable bathroom. And uh, so there was a door, you go, you go up the steps and then there's this door and you go in and there's the bathroom, but this um, this shower was located behind one of the like decorative arches on the top, like from the pillar to the rafter in the lavender bed's house. And so this arch created like a natural doorway, if you will, from the bathroom into the shower. And I just loved it. I, I didn't even add anything to that doorway. I didn't add like a screen with a full threshold or anything. It was perfect the way it was. And so... After that, I needed something on a different wall to say, well, <laughs> I'm not just going to be lazy and rely on the lavender beds architecture. I want to add something of my own. And so that's where this inset shelf came into play because I didn't want like free floating open shelves or anything. I really wanted to play with pushing the space outward because if I had like 
actual shelves, like even using like a Riviera shelf, for example, um, that would push into the space of how tiny this bathroom was. Because you think about it, I'm pretty sure a row can't get into this bathroom. Ashen, can you attest? Um, <laughs> well, you I, brought your row there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I made it. <laughs> it, it, was, it was very small, but this, this little space, you want to push into the wall to make it feel bigger rather than extending the shelf out into the space. That will make it feel more cramped. Anyway, but yeah, I talk a lot. No, I'm sorry. no, no. <laughs> I really like your your little house, like the the first floor, because right now I'm sort of trying to do the same thing. But no matter what I do, it feels like I'm so cramped. But then I, you know, I remember visiting your house and being up there on the top floor, and I felt so spacious. Like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> it's all about that layout, like. You know, I mean, I know you know, but that layout of guiding people through the house and like just making, making space, like creating space. So in this house, not only in this bathroom did I make inset shelves into the walls, but like I had a built in bookshelf and, you know, cabinets in the walls, but like, you know, pushed in. So you still had plenty of walkway. And so these things were, you know, floated up at the edges of wooden lofts and stuff something that it's not in your way it's not cluttered there's plenty of a clear walking path and everything else is like built in that it's it's how you approach a small space in real life too right you just have to yeah build between the studs you with mini houses you have lots of things like you loft the bed so it's like above the kitchen and like all that sort of stuff just little tricks to make a small space feel bigger and it was really fun to do the one floor cottage challenge because you had half the space yeah. and you had to make it feel like you're just like crammed into a tiny like box well right now what i'm trying to work on is the first floor i'm small i have the bottom floor is kind of like the cafe and up uh, originally I was going to do like a starry sky, very dark, but the more I thought about it, I was just like, nah, I don't want it that dark. I'm actually going to do like a rooftop terrace kind of thing where it's like a covered roof Ooh. and I'm going to have ivy. I floated verdant partitions up to kind of cover the natural dark wood, you know, like that hangs down from a ceiling. Yeah, yeah, the like the rafters almost. Yeah, so I have that. So it looks a little bit more natural, like it's, uh, you know, woodsy and everything. And then I'm going to try to do. Very cute. I'm gonna try try to do a like cityscape. I don't know. I'll figure something out. Oh, a cityscape. I mean, when I say, that sounds cool. When I say that, it's not gonna be like one of those beautiful dioramas that everyone else has done. It's just gonna be like a, an aquarium with paintings, probably. <laughs> well, I mean, I have enjoyed the dioramas. They are certainly every housing purist nightmare but um <laughs> they're amazing to look at i will say that shay's use of um a balcony looking out like into a city alleyway using just the stone wall and the imitation square window or the imitation small windows was a brilliant concept yes i really liked how shay did those this house, by the way, is like the definition of adding layers and interest to your walls and your ceilings and even somewhat your floors. Um, your inset windows with the brick? Yeah, the brick. Oh my goodness. I also have, um, on the left side is the brick, on the right side it's wood showing very, not, not too much, but it's there, they're recessed a little bit. It's subtle, yeah. And that's the, the Hanya mask that nobody ever uses, and I decided to oh, use it. Oh, it threw so many people off. Yeah, and uh, cause I, I, I don't know why, but I made like 20 or 30 of those, and I was like, I'm sitting on a gold mine, but I wasn't. I couldn't sell them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the cracked Hanya mask is, is not expensive anywhere that I look. It's uh, yeah. pretty easy to make but <laughs> but your use of using the the gold frame as trim and then using what are those the the beds the hanging yeah the hanging bed two of them floated up so those naturally have trim or gold trim on the bottom of them and so tying that into the gold trim of the hanya mask is like an excellent pop of color to frame 
the dark wall, which in turn frames the painting. It's so much focus all in one, like, perfect, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Constantly searching right now. Like, all of these lines are pushing your eye towards that desk and towards that painting. It's, it's perfect. Your rafters, your lights in that line, they're all saying, look this way, you know? The perspective, that's what I'm looking for. All of this perspective is angled towards that center focal point. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I'm very big on that. I have a fireplace there, but I didn't want that to be the focus. The focus was the desk. I wanted to just create a lot of layers and depth. I'm really big on that. I, I always feel bad because people are like, can I watch you decorate? And yeah, anybody can watch me decorate, but there's really not much to see because it takes me a long time to figure things out. And I So are you saying that it all happens in your mind? <laughs> not so much visually like what you're doing? Well, I would say I just mess with it constantly. I will have everything down and then I'll look at it and I'll just be like, what can I add to this? And, um, and then it becomes a mix and match game and figuring out, I look at uh, Final Fantasy XIV housing a lot, like a lot, for just things I can add. Because uh, originally- Okay, <laughs> well, I, I, let me just throw this in there. Yes, I stare at that website for hours, just looking at, okay, okay what is a tabletop item that I can put? Yeah. What is this? I need something with this rough shape, like. Yes, and uh, yeah, I, I look at it a lot. And I remember when I made this room, Particular. I didn't have the books there. I did have the mask. I had the mask and the black wall and I said, you know, like I'm gonna put the desk here. This is where I've always wanted it. And uh, what was I gonna put there? I wasn't going to have the books. I think I was just gonna have um, maybe like plants or something there instead. But the more I looked at it, the more I realized I needed texture and the, the last thing I added to that wall was the bed. Yeah, because I was looking at it like, what else could I do? Like some kind of scaffolding would look cute. And then I remembered mm -hmm. I had these beds that nobody ever wants, the Hingen beds. <laughs> but they had the gold, so it was perfect. That is perfect. And again, with using the bookshelves, um, I love that you did not use the full mounted bookshelf because you could have obviously um, widened the room a lot in order to accommodate them but that's not really what what would have looked good there um but they create depth and um add movement with all the different colors in the books and like the different angles that they're at but the depth of being able to see past the books to you know the the back of the bookshelf there says that oh there's a little bit more depth to this wall there's something behind it um and it pops the rest of it forward you're skylight i i really need to point out the skylight you have it on either side so like there's a lower ceiling um where those rafters and the snowman butt lights are but on either side so the side that we can see there's a little bit of window there at the top of the painting or at the top of the picture there's windows also on the other side which i absolutely adore that it's just the narrowest little bit of skylight right above that desk but it adds so much just look at all of the shadows on that back wall of the window panes like it's absolutely stunning when you can add that in there even though it's something that no one no one except anyone who went and sat in that chocobo chair would be able to see the windows but you see the effect of the windows you know yep, what i mean exactly yeah thank you so much for pointing that out raps because yes that was my <laughs> that was my intention uh just because you don't see it doesn't mean it shouldn't be there and obviously the shadows yep. are very pretty they add to it they add like that in combination with the brick and the granite and like the dark colors um, makes it look very what I like to call industrial chic because you can see the the grid of the window uh, what do you, what do you, I don't even know what those are called the like window just pane? of the, the no the pane is the glass oh. I don't know what the metal part in between is called necessarily I I should my family is like in the business of windows but um uh anyway um it's it's pretty because it adds like you can it's like you know that that's a metal grid back there you know what i mean like yeah. it it really throws in another it's almost like throwing in a whole nother element that isn't even visible but implied yeah so just to to wrap this picture up the focus of course was the wall 
and the gold accents and you know I want you to look right at that but the windows are very subtle and they add to it as well and um, Div's not here but he had a really nice picture of one of his uh, builds and since we were discussing windows Div really likes his windows <laughs> Even though he's always he loves them, he's always like, rah, 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 you know, walls and windows. But this man, you can't, you'd have to pry that crystal window from his cold, dead hands. He, <laughs> but I mean, he doesn't always use it with the crystal, right? He uses it sometimes with the imitation square window, but the crystal, I think, is his favorite look for. Yeah, and unfortunately his screenshots are so dark. They are, they are, but they're gorgeous. Like, I wish he was here. Anyway. I wish he was here because I remember when he first started working on this, he uh, he would message me, um, you know, works in progress. And his whole thing was when you walk into the bedroom, there's the fireplace to the left, you know, a low wall to the right with a uh, screen there added as well. But he wanted the focus on the bed. And he made this really pretty headboard and emphasis on the stone arches and stuff like that. I need to visit one of his houses and just to make my own screenshots. <laughs> okay, so here's the problem. I went to go visit. Cerberus is locked. I have a character. I should just do that. Uh jealous okay because i legitimately i was like i'm gonna go see this and can't get there so rude well it, oh, wow that's interesting that it's locked it must have been a new development because before i was i think i think it became very busy after the um eu data center split yes amara did mention that but yeah uh D div loves his windows loves his riviera wardrobes uh and I know it's hard for people to see in this particular picture, but there is a lot of stuff um, going on with layers on the walls. Um, he has, you know, partitions turned sideways to create pillars up to either side of the um, headboard. He has you know, just lots of non-flat walls, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. There's a lot of interest created in different layered elements to his walls and i know we saw that in his garlean build very very heavily accented in his garlean build but he does the same thing with the ishgard stuff because it's it's very ornamental in style right it's supposed to convey centuries of building and you know accumulating levels of different wallpaper different masonry you know rebuilding ishgard after a dragon attack like there's just lots of different layers to the architecture yeah i really like how he i watched him build one time and it was uh it's very interesting because he, uh, i had everything in storage and i had a couple things out and he just took things and just made this really awesome like abandoned room and he put like grass poking out from the bottom he had used lofts and wood beans to make it look like the floor was broken up and i was just like how did what the fuck that is really cool. Like I'm, I'm having flashbacks to like almost mist of like an entire island of abandoned structures. Yeah, it was really interesting. He used the the marble carpet because I had that in my storage for some reason, and but he used it. To, he used it to make it look like overgrowth, and he made a uh, like the ceiling was broken. He used vegetable boxes and put it in the windows to make it look like someone boarded it up. Yes. Okay, that also great use for haunted houses. Looks awesome because those wax vegetables are perfect over a window for like just a couple slats of boards, you know? Looks throwing that out there y'all for when Halloween comes back around and you're making haunted houses. Throw that one in there. People will love it. Now, this one is your bedroom. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I added this exactly. I think it's because uh, I usually like to have obviously the bed be a focus, but um, it's very simple still. You know, it's a recessed wall, and that was the 
the two beds with the the three desks to make a, a blanket and stuff like that. Right. But uh, I, I did. I just wanted to have like a very subtle way to present the bed without making it like, you know, oh, this is where I sleep, you know, with all these like flowers and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I like to go kind of subdued with my bedrooms, but I like it to make I like it to look pretty. Of course, it's definitely got a feminine touch to it. Um, I love the I don't know what you want to call it, like the the shelf behind the bed headboard. Yeah. Um, because that's that like inset look again, and that's like one of my favorite things recently is not having the windows sit flat on a wall like because they they stick out right they're they're not really flat on the wall that the trim sticks out not that that's unusual for a realistic house look but i like when it is flush with the wall because then it looks or even in set the way that you have it where it's pushed a little bit further back because that to me just feels a little bit more polished um, and so you have the your favorite like country glade trim above that, and it just looks great because it, it mimics a curtain look almost like a valance. Yeah, I really love that. It, it just again more of that layering and interest um, draws your eye to it. Whereas you know the the desk and the doorway are are definitely secondary to looking at the bed and all the interest that is pulled there because of that inset wall with the shelf behind it. Now, about the windows, when I did this originally, and I was looking at it, because I like to, when I start to flesh out a room and it looks almost done, I try to look at it from straight away angles. I always try to kind of design to where your eye will always be centered in looking at something. And I think when I take pictures, I reflect that as well. I like to have things kind of centered and shown. But uh, when I was looking at this, and I was looking at it from this exact angle, and at the time, all I had was just the, the windows. I didn't have the, the full threshold, the screens. And I was just looking at it, and I was like, wow, it looks like it's missing something. And I added the full threshold uh, for a textured, layered look, and I think it really helps a lot. And definitely, that is, that's one that I think a lot of the housing world picked up. And I think they picked it up from you. I can't say for certain because I wasn't really around before that, but I, I'm pretty sure that the first place I saw this Fool's Threshold imitation square window layered look using the Fool's Threshold as like a shade that is pulled down over it. Um, I think I first saw that from you and I've seen it everywhere since then because it's such a simple but um, dramatic change to the look, you know, and it it very clearly says this shade is pulled down, you know, because yeah. it's you can set it at different heights and you know just wherever you want it, but it looks very. Oh, what's I? My brain is not thinking of words today, apparently, <laughs> but it's it's a dramatic change to such a simple look. Yeah, I like it because um, yeah, you can have your screens, and my bathroom has the screens, so you look at it and you know, oh, that's a screen. And it's closed, but it transforms the window to where, oh, this window is open and it looks like a screen. And I think, mm -hmm. like you said, it's an obvious thing that you can look at and you know without it being like, oh, that's too Asian looking for this house. Right. Whereas if you had like a full wall of full thresholds, you'd say, well, yeah, that's definitely got, you know, the Hingen tones to it. Um, but you can, when you layer it with the, the metal panes of the imitation window it no longer has that overtly Asian look to it it still can be Western and it no longer just takes on that that look yeah all right well let's see I think that's it for pictures and no let me check discord I don't think anyone's really submitted any of theirs no one wants to show off their their accent well yeah no one wants to show off how they did their aquarium how they did their fireplace, how they put like decorations above their bed. You know, I saw a really pretty one. Um, again, it was very simple. It was a uh, it was a full threshold, and it was a very Asian bedroom. But they used the the fan from Housing Merchant that no one ever uses, 
and they put it inside the window so only the spokes of the fan showed and it looked really pretty like like a sun oh that sounds wonderful yeah i really like how they did that and they did that right above their bed so it looked like a nice pretty headboard accent piece oh i think i remember what you're talking about actually and that did that was very very yeah excuse me sorry <laughs> Uh, yeah, that had a really, really, like, transformative look to it. Because, it, like, even though you know what it is, it was very, um, it just made a statement, you know? Because it was a bold color, and it, it fit the headrest or the headboard very well. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree. It was It was definitely a beautiful, beautiful look to it, and that I hadn't really seen before. Okay, well, we're going to go into our walkthrough portion very shortly. This is from Mimi Kurtix. Let me get the address. She's on Leviathan, where I was originally from, so I have an alt there, like 60 alt, actually. Oh, dang. I, so, okay, funny story. When I said I was running through the, the Final Fantasy 15 crossover fate, um, <laughs> I made this alt originally to visit a house in the goblet so it's a gladiator it starts in Ulda. um you know it's obviously easier to start an alt in the city where you want to go visit right and um so gladiator Ulda. i apparently completely skipped that very first quest that you do to go attune to the aetherite and stuff totally skipped it still in my log but none of the uh, objectives were achieved and i somehow had managed to run myself all the way to lavender beds and this was to take pictures of um, one of Shay's commissions for her. Um, and uh, I got on this account ready to come see Mimi's house for this walkthrough. And I was like, great, I already have an alt. It's a gladiator, so it'll be easy access to the goblet. And uh, it's in lavender beds right now, but that's fine because it's a gladiator, easy access to the goblet. <laughs> Turns out <laughs> I had no way to get back to Ulda. Because um, I hadn't attuned to the crystal in Ulda. <laughs> I hadn't attuned to any crystals. So I, I was in Lavender Beds. I went and attuned to the one in Bent Branch uh, in Central Shroud. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go attune to this one. Then I'll be good. I went to hit my re return. Hadn't learned it yet. I was like, uh-oh. Oh, no. This means, I haven't, this means I haven't attuned <laughs> to the one in Ulda. So, like, I... Uh, anyway, it was a big mess. Legitimately, the whole time we were talking, I was running back manually through Shroud and South Shroud and Thanalan all the way back to Ulda to get back to this goblet house. So I have now manually run from Lavender Beds to the goblet and back on Leviathan. Like, I could have made many alts in that time, but I guess I just, you, I don't you know. You wanted to prove to yourself that you could do it. I, I'm really good at dodging mobs, apparently. Well, you know, I, I think we've mentioned this before. Final Fantasy is not as dangerous as WoW, because if this was WoW, they would have a starter zone, and then they would have, like, a max <laughs> level zone right there that you, like, a little sprout would have to run through. <laughs> and it, and Can it, we talk about how dangerous Red Ridge Mountains are? Well, I remember one time, my friend, he was, I was brand new to the game, but he had played, and he was showing me around, and he you had to go on foot to do everything. There wasn't like a two-seater mount, and I needed to get to Scarlet Monastery, and I was a I was alliance. <gasps> oh no! So he and he's a bard, or not a bard, he's a hunter. So there's no res with him, and he took me through Western Plaguelands, which is a uh, like a level 50 zone and kind of end game zone at that time. <laughs> and oh I, and my I goodness! Was, I was just starting out, and uh, the thing with WoW is. These monsters will aggro you from across the map. You don't even have to have... Dude, yeah, you will have the entire zone on you as a low level. <laughs> yes, so uh, I knew I was targeted because, you know, the music started and I'd be like, where is it coming from? So he's doing his best to try to, like, make sure that... As your, <laughs> as your hunter's pack falls off and you're like, oh no, I'm not running fast anymore. Yeah, so he's trying to figure out what's going to kill me. It's like these undead bears and he's trying to protect oh. me. <laughs> Kill them faster! Well, it ended up being me corpse hopping my way. <laughs> oh, it. no. See, I remember, I don't know 
which way my person who got me into WoW took me, but we ended up running like straight past the gates of Lordaeron. You know, the, the upper part yeah. of Undercity. <laughs> and I swear, there was just one... So you know how when you get the aggro of a guard of one of those cities, yeah. it will announce in the PvP chat, Lordaeron is under attack. <laughs> like, the uh, Undercity is under attack. And they're like, oh, crap. We're not trying to attack Undercity. We're just trying to get to Scarlet Monastery. But then all of these PvPers come crawling out of the woodworks to kill the alliance that are in Tears Fall Glades and I was like, <laughs> no, I'm just trying to get to the instance. You know, that reminds me of a funny story. I was, I was in Swamp of Sorrows and I think I was like level 30 at the time. I was Final Fantasy 14 podcast, by the way, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was level 30, I was by myself and I was alliance and so the, there was like an orc scout you know, NPC all by herself, so I was like, you know, I'm gonna mess her up, you know, because girl. <laughs> so I did. I killed it, and again, Swamp of Sorrows. Nobody felt like a badass, right? Yeah, nobody goes here. And the thing is, I played on a PVE server, so I flagged myself PVP just to do that. So I killed the guard, and the moment I did, some kind of high level. It was like a skull to me. It was too high level for me. It was a rogue <laughs> player had been stealthed and watching oh, me. No. And I guess he waited, because all he did was just one-shot me. He just came out of stealth. Just, bah! Oh, no! <laughs> See, okay, that sounds like... I mean, that's clearly a, a self-induced problem, right? <laughs> I, I leveled on a PvP surfer because I hate my life, and I'm a masochist, apparently. <laughs> it was miserable. Let's talk about Stranglethorn Vale. Oh, and no. how that was just an impossible zone to level in because of the prevalent ganking like it was it's just a meme that that's where you go to gank lobies yep yep oh terrible I, I was sheltered i was on a pve server <laughs> the, the care bear servers yes yes <laughs> <laughs> oh no i wouldn't i would never do that again in my life ever it's not worth the frustration <laughs> to be on a pvp server ever well i remember uh, later on i did go to area 52 it was pvp and the thing is, the, the, the way WoW works is you have your horde and your alliance. And Area 52 was so much horde that you could go out into the world and never see alliance. Because yes. nobody wanted to get killed. <laughs> yep, I know. I was, I was actually horde on Area 52, so. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it, it was safety in numbers, let me tell you that. All right, it's almost on. A couple more minutes, I think, like two more minutes, and then Maximum Aesthetic going to be visiting Mimi. Yes. It's clearly meant to be seen. I mean, she's got lots of nice lighting in here, but it'll be beautiful with the daylight because this lighting is on zero. Absolute zero. I do have a reshade on. It's very subtle, though. It's just going to make things brighter. That'll be nice, considering the lighting is at zero. Yeah, <laughs> I think we will all appreciate. It is really cute. I cannot wait to have it shown. I'm really glad that I came because it's excellent to be visiting as a Lala in a place built for Lalas. Yeah, so here's the outside. I can show it. She's over here in Goblet, which, you know, Goblet's grown on me. Oh, there's some... Oh, now she... <laughs> uh, Goblet's gr uh, really grown on me, honestly. But she's got a very cute yard. Using the pace of house unironically. <laughs> hey, 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 now. <laughs> they're, Pisa, they're, these, these are also humanoids. Let's just bear that in mind. Cute little garden. Cute little house. You know, I hide my garden in one of these as well. I wonder if she did. I don't see a scarecrow. She might have. Or she might not be using one. These are these are botanist gardens. And there's uh there's one of the minis, the retainer. Cute. Cute cute with the the bustle. Such a classic look. I wish it were dyeable. It's not. I thought there was two different versions. There might be. I'm not much of a glamour person in case you can tell I wear the same glamour like all the time. Uh, yeah, I'm the you're talking to the person who's had the same glamour since Heaven's Ward. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, there you go. Salem, if you would like for us to come do a walkthrough of your house, definitely throw those into our walkthrough requests. We would love to love to showcase. Yep, I have my uh, my surly wench here. So <laughs> I was gonna say she is she is dressed to the nines there with those combat boots and that uh that short my my gear that I didn't really work on. <laughs> Hey, it's cute. I still have a 59 hat. Ugh. Nice, nice. Optimized stats. Yep, clearly. yep. I was working very hard on this. <laughs> Alright, let's go inside. The music in here is incredibly chill. I actually don't, I don't have... I don't know if you have. I don't have snow on for this. I think it's the... I want to say it's the mushroomery, which... Okay, I... I have been harping on Ashen that we should do this for a segment, but the importance of your orchestrian choice yes. in your house to set the tone, I think it's incredibly important. And the fact that she has the mushroomery playing in here in this potion shop really sells it for me. I love it because music is very crucial to okay, me well, in my life. I can turn it on just one second. <laughs> Did you, did you hear me harp on it enough that she was like, "All right, all right, Rhapsody, we'll we'll turn the music." You convinced me. So here's her potion shop. Uh, very Lala friendly, not very Rue friendly. <laughs> Super cute and tiny. Definitely sells it as an actual like fantasy shop. I like it a lot. It's because it's like it's legitimately like a store because on either side you have these adorable like potion racks. And here's where it's actually cooked. I love it. Oh, she's got a Halloween. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Man, I, I think that. Do you think that that might be like her cauldron almost? She mentioned she wished there was a cauldron, and I can agree with that. I think that, I I mean, to me, it's instantly recognizable as a cauldron theme, using the jack-o'-lantern candy thing as in that spot. To me, it just says, this is where the cauldron is. This is what you meant for it to be. I get it. I like it. Little bathroom. Cute. More herbs, more plants everywhere. Very earthy. Pretty! She put it over the steps! Yeah, oh, and she has a stool inside. Oh, yay! So for, you can sit in the... Okay, so that, that's that been a personal gripe of mine. How you cannot sit in the bathtubs as a lollafell without drowning. <laughs> um, so the stool makes a lot of sense. I personally raised the floor of my bathtub. Um, but that also works. Very cute. I love the windows all around, making it seem like its own room rather than, you know, what it is, the stairwell, but it's done very... Oh, she's got a little waiting room seat here. Oh, that's precious. That's super well done. I've seen these manor stoles make it a comeback. For sure. Okay, so this, to me, screams CVS. <laughs> CVS. <laughs> <laughs> this is the apothecary. This is this is where we sit waiting to get our prescription, our prescribed potions. That's a great detail, by the way. And then we're going to go I love the window of sh like did you see all those shelves in front of the window? That's great. Yes, that's something I noticed. And you know, hey, that's an accent wall. It is. You're you're filtering the light in through that, and you can see the different jewel tones of the potions. That's really well. Very very cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, the use of the actual goblet architecture, the trim, the the decorative trim, to change the size of the imitation square window. That's I great. love this. Yeah. Cuz it again, it gives it that almost a, a balanced look. Yeah, it looks very natural. Or I mean it could be a balance or a curtain or something like that. Definitely definitely well done. 
So this is the living quarters above the shop, I guess? Yep, it looks like she's painting. Very cute. Got some orders over here. Okay, so this this light that we're looking at, this pendant light, obviously something we can't get rid of. Um, natural light. But the lighting's on zero, but there's a light source. I see. There are lamps above it. Got it. Yeah, she's That's clever. using the Belladian, Belladian crystals. Yes, and there's just, what, two of them? But it's creating a light source above the the natural light so that she can have the rest of the house on zero but still have light source from that light. That's very Very cute. You know, everything, uh, everything oh, has a place. Oh, Lala Precious. Yeah, I love it. This is very cute shop. Don't those there. don't they make squeaky noises when you walk on them? Does what make squeaky noises? The I thought the 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 heads make squeaky noises when you step on them. Oh my goodness, do they? I have no idea. I remember somebody pointing that out. They didn't like it. <laughs> I don't know. I can't get on them because of this shelf. I guess I have to figure that out, out on my own time. <laughs> hey, uh, I've got about 12 of them that we used to make that break it down. Yeah, for really. Fire with. <laughs> but I love the, the use of clutter on this particular paint shelf. Very cute. Now, it's interesting. I'm going to sit here. Because this is, uh, like you said, light, uh, light source z uh, zero, but she has lights everywhere, windows everywhere. Kind of the antithesis to Div. <laughs> Right? Lots of natural lighting and it's very well done. Oh, here's another thing. Look at all of the the green in these herbs, the green in this paint, and then the green painting. What Love that level of immersion. Now, is she painting the, the herbs green and selling them off like some kind of snake no. oil? No, those are the pigments. That's, that's so my like, canon. To me, I see this as she is making her own paints almost. Like she's taking those pigments from the herbs and making her own okay. different colors. All yeah. right, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. I like I like my lore. I like it enough to uh, look at it in the houses anyway. <laughs> Not as much as dip. Very cute she's shop. Even here. All kinds of, just like, it's just everywhere. It's so cute. The All the stuffed animals for the Lalafell, just like throwing that in there. Just, we're cute things, okay? I love it. Very earthy. Highly approve. And it, it it's all that, oh, okay. Okay. I understand. Sorry. I'm like, I was like, what is, does this come with herbs? But it, it does come with herbs, but not these herbs. These are just floated. Okay. I understand now. Sorry. Just had an epiphany on screen. Sorry, y'all. Cute, cute, cute. Yeah, she did great. And uh, one floor. One floor challenge. <laughs> My favorite, honestly. Super fun. I highly recommend anyone who has, you know, just a a small available for them to play with just try making a fun little layout because like the way that she has it broken up she's clearly got the front space you know the back like so it, the just even this one white rectangular partition that she put here to divide the front and the back makes all the difference in the world of showing this is the back where we cook this is the front where the store is and then you know up here there's a lot of measure of privacy provided by these wood beams to create like almost a an open wall i mean you call it that? the the beams being used for their intended purpose of a railing <laughs> well yeah but just in that it's not at railing height which you would normally think of as like waist height but they're they're here to provide a sense of um obstruction but without obstructing your view is what i'm trying to say at least maybe for you you're too tall i can see right into everything at my height yeah i am pretty tall <laughs> you are barely making it uh oh 
room for I like my rose. Anyway. Oh look, it's now she. Yeah, pay a uh, customer. Hello. We'll sit together. Very definitely yeah. cute. Love it. I signed the book earlier. I was here the other day scouting. <laughs> well, I will leave a nice little message as well. Definitely would draw themic inspirations from this, you know, for just the shop in general, the layout. I love, I mean, I know I was just gushing about it, but it's just a simple partition really shows the difference between the purpose of the space. You know what I mean? Just breaking up your layout, showing what it's used for. I really like it. I love it. I just, the openness of having that table out in the middle, you know, where she's having her breakfast, it's fine because it, it's still broken up from the intended purpose of the front, which is the shop. Yeah, very, very nice use. I know Mimi decorates a lot. She would post frequently. Um, I think her FC and stuff like that. So hopefully she gives us another walkthrough request. I'd love to see more of her work. Definitely. As a fellow Lalafo, I approve. All right. I think this about wraps up. Little message here. This about wraps oh, sorry. up. Sorry, I was I was like typing, so not talking. No worries. But yeah, this um, uh, I guess this is the end of the podcast for this weekend. Wait, how do we thing again? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, what was it? Hold on. I'm like really bad at talking, at like remembering. If it's not in a language that I comprehend, then my it's just in one ear out the other. Yeah, we're gonna say "Wir vermissen dich, dividos." <laughs> and we are vermissen dich, dividos. Yes, yep. We miss you, Div. He's he's always he's the youth. We are we are the the old jaded coffee drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> He, he brings a lot of energy to us. He does. <laughs> energy. So much energy. Ener but anyway. Yes, yes. Frenetic energy. Good lord. Uh, yeah. But also, just hoping he's having a great time, whatever he's doing, and looking forward to talking with him again about, you know, lighting zero versus lighting five next week. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, feel free to leave your house and our discord for us to walk through or any kind of topic you want us to cover and we'll see you uh, we'll hopefully hear from you again next week and absolutely look forward to chatting with you all next week and